Hello there, World of Tankers, and welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Drudels Blitz, and in today's video, we are going to be taking a look at the Tier 10 French Tech Tree Light Tank, the Boss Chation 25 Ton. I'm not sure why I decided to do a stream on this vehicle today, but I just finished a two-hour live stream playing in this tank. And personally, I think the Bat Chat is still one of the most influential vehicles in the game. It's crazy to me that people consider this tank nerfed when I was able to perform 4,000 average damage, 75% win rate, with 20 battles played in an over 1 hour and 40 minute live stream using both guns. So if you're about to go into to the comments and say, oh, the Bat Chat's nerfed, oh, it's not good anymore, you're wrong. It's still an incredibly capable tank, and if you're not performing at the stats that I am, it's not because the tank isn't good, it's because you aren't driving it properly. Now, obviously, I don't expect anybody to do 3,900 in the tank, but the point being, this is an incredibly capable vehicle, and if you understand its play style and capabilities, it's really good. The Bat Chat needed to be nerfed from the previous state that it was in. It had too much view range, it had too much everything. And I'm glad that Wargaming nerfed it. But personally, I think it's just as strong as it was previously due to the four-shot gun. In today's video, we're going to be comparing both guns on the Bat Chat. I'll be sharing my opinions and experience on which of the two I like better for the 10 battles I played in each gun today. And uh, yeah, so let's start off with a statistical comparison of both guns. We can see that the four-shot has a lot of DPM, 3,223 to be exact, making this have as much DPM as the average tier 10 medium. And the three-shot gun has quite a bit less. It's still not bad. 2,800 damage per minute is pretty good, but it's nowhere near as good as the 3,200 that the, uh, the four-shot gun has. The other disadvantages are worse uh, shell reload time, but to be fair, that's not a completely correct argument. You see, the 350 damage per shot on the three shot means that you can deal 1,050 damage in a matter of 5.6 seconds. And the 270 damage on the four shot does like 1,100-ish, 1,070 damage, but it takes 6.66 seconds because it has an extra shell. So even though the intraclip's faster, that's technically not true. So that is something to keep in mind. The average damage is also 80 less per shot, so something else to remember. There are advantages and disadvantages for both guns. And what I will tell you is that I actually performed very similar with both guns. Even though the three shot has quite a bit less damage per minute than the four shot, I was able to sit at around 3,700 average damage when I finished playing the 10 games in the three shot. And to be honest, the only reason my average damage was lower than the four shots gameplay, which was around 4,200 average for the 10 games played, was simply down to the fact that I had some really mediocre teams. In fact, three of the games I played with the three shot were instant steamrolls where I had no capabilities whatsoever, where I didn't really have that happen at all with the four shot. So, that's something to keep in mind. I went at about 90. I think out of the 10 games I played with the four shot, I lost one, maybe two, but I don't think I, I think I lost one with the four shot and I lost three, four games with the, uh, with the three shot. So that's really something to keep in mind. I would honestly say that if you gave me the same teams I had with the four shot, with the three shot gun, I probably would have performed very similar in most of the games. Therefore, I think both guns are very viable options, but Personally, I like the four shot better and it's down to the fact it's more accurate on move and it has AP standard with APCR premium. I like APCR a lot as a premium shell. I don't like it as a standard shell because AP is just flat better, but as a premium shell, it's really nice because it has the ability to cut through spaced armor, which AP obviously does a great job as, as well as a premium round, but the only tanks that have AP premium are Japanese vehicles. Apart from that, you're looking at the heat shell for your premium round and that's what the three shot gun features i don't like heat as a premium shell because yes it does have nice things and super high pen heat is great but the bat chat doesn't have super high pen heat it's kind of stuck in that intermediate area where it's not enough to really cut through heavies reliably it's got really bad shell velocity on the heat i don't like that to be honest so there are some things i don't really like about the heat on this gun but enough about the the heat and everything like that. Let's just talk about the gameplay with the three shot. We'll talk about the gameplay with the four shot and I'll let you know my personal opinions. So we've already done 1,286 damage in this game. I have bled a bit of health, but it really wasn't my fault. 
I didn't know that they'd have a camping E6 until he shot me when I was trying to leave. So we're going to aim it on this E6. We got a 340 damage shot. We get a 330 damage shot. And let's see if we get a 320. Nope, we get a 330 again. All kind of low rolling, but that's all right. We are up to 2,300 damage already in this game. And we can see where this clipping potential on the bat chat feels great. In that 5.6 seconds, I'm able to rip out that damage and then back in the cover. And this is why autoloaders are so good because you can deal such a large amount of damage in such a short amount of time and then back into cover and you don't even have a dpm problem this is why as i've said many times in the past auto loaders need to be nerfed now you know what's crazy is that grill actually spotted me yeah that's wild i did not think that grill was going to spot me but he did however we are up to 2600 damage to be fair i've only had one high roll every other shot i fired has low rolled this game massively i actually did some calculations and if every shot i had fired at this point had just done average damage i would have been over 3000 which is kind of wild but it shows you just how much rng can affect your results and overall uh, enjoyment of the game but that's why skill is also a thing that you have to keep in mind. And I usually try to use skill to counteract RNG. So we get a 350 damage shell to the 57. Yeah, you just saw that. Your your eyes did not deceive you. We just hit the grill. A spot that didn't even exist on the grill, but we somehow hit it. Yeah, everybody saw that on stream too. You might say, oh, well, you're running a modded uh, grill skin. So that's why you just didn't see the armor correctly. Nope, that's not the case. The grill is modeled properly. It's wargaming that doesn't know how to model the tank properly after it's blown up. We love wargaming. Either way, we are at 3,300 damage at this point, which is pretty good. And at this point in time, I'm trying to think of just where I want to position my tank. We can see the Ritter. The problem is I can't kill that Ritter, but now I can. I was like, please, somebody shoot that tank. See, my damage per, per clip, as we know, is 1,050, but we also know that my RNG sucks, point in case. And because of that, or I guess that's case in point. But um, we can see that the the RNG of this tank is not great. My, my rolls this game have been absolutely atrocious. So I do not trust that I'm going to get lucky shots when aiming in on this Ritter. So because of that, I am going to wait. And there you go. Look at that. 320, 678. Yeah, again, we should have dealt 700 damage with those two shots. So my RNG has just been sucking this battle. Wargaming is like, oh, you're averaging too much damage. You're, you're doing too much. We're going to start nerfing your RNG so you start doing worse. However, it's not stopping me this game. But point being that I knew that if I rushed that Ritter with 1200 health, there's no way he was running or there's a pretty high chance he was running small liner. So I was really worried about that. And by the way, zero damage HE, bruh. We loaded in a heat shell. Thankfully, we do actually end up penning the 57 heavy. But the, th the thing about the the bat chat is obviously you sacrifice a lot when you push somebody so you need to make sure that whoever you're pushing is in the scope of your damage because if you screw up a push you know like the cv or cs63 for example if i push him he's got 1200 health so yeah i can clip him and i can get you know 1050 off of him but i'll die so that's something that I have to keep in mind. Now, honestly, I probably would have been better off if I just had dumped my clip into the CS. I decided that instead of dumping my clip, I was going to back up. And you'll see that right here. So we're going to poke the CS. We're going to get one shell into his tank, 339. We shoot him in the track again. And he puts on his adrenaline. And I decided I'm just going to back up because there's no point to rush him here. There's no point to kill myself, especially because I don't want to leave the the possibility of losing this game up to my badger and minnow minnow pens a shell on the cs i kind of just jump the gun there and mess up a shot but the cs is going to try and rush me and it doesn't matter because i have the uh the badger overlooking so he dies i deal 5258 damage and we get a pretty good win here this battle was a lot more stressful when i was streaming than obviously watching a replay i had to do a lot of repositioning back and forth back and forth i had to figure out what was the best way to go you know, a lot of people watch a skilled player and they think, oh, well, that's really easy to do. But what you're watching versus what actually happens in battle are two very different things. In that game, there was a billion things going through my mind as I was playing because I had to keep deciding whether I wanted to push wide, if I wanted to go back and try and take out the CS, if I wanted to flank around this way or I wanted to push there or there. There's a lot of options, especially with so much mobility. You have to really narrow down the path of what is the best route to play now we can see that the three shot did fine but there were some problems with it 
the accuracy caused us to miss quite a few shots. Our RNG sucks, but that's not really the gun. That's just bad RNG. But there were a lot of moments there when the gun really did not work the way I wanted it to. And because of that, I tend to find myself leaning more towards the four shot. Why? Because even if you miss your shots, you have a quicker reload. In the three shot, if you miss one of your three, you're losing a lot of effective damage per minute. With the four shot, you have four shells. So if you miss one of the four, you still deal a lot of damage. And not only that, but you reload your clip faster. So that's a big advantage. And there's another huge advantage for the four shot, and that is the shell reload boost. Shell reload boost with high-end consumables lasts 26 seconds. My clip reload is 13 seconds. And my dumping time is 4 seconds. If you do that math there, it means that I can fully dump a clip, reload my entire clip, and then fully dump again with Shell Reload Boost activated. So in other words, I can get two full clips out with Shell Reload Boost. That is insane. And it gives me a huge DPM increase, taking me from around 3,200 DPM to around 3,600 effective damage per minute. Shell Reload Boost is essentially adrenaline for light tanks, which is kind of wild. Well, not light tanks. Adrenaline for autoloaders is what I mean to say. So we spot the enemy grill. This is why, by the way, I run vents on my light. I remember reading some goofy comment, which got a couple likes on my first video I made on the boss shot to own, saying, I can't trust Rudels. He's running vents on his bat chat. Well, I can tell you why I'm running vents. It's because I'm able to spot tanks like that 57 Heavy like that grill 15 and i hate to break it to you but if you think vents was a limiting factor of my performance today i don't know what to tell you again you can see my stats right at the top there 75 percent 3964 average damage so unless you can go at that level i don't think you have the right to say vents is an awful decision especially after wargaming buffed vents to eight percent of your crew skills which is actually quite nice so we spot the grill we get two easy shells into him already we're up to 2600 damage that just shows you how quick you're able to get out damage in these games. What I find really cringe is that in the replay tab, Wargaming doesn't have damage assisted as one of the values they show you. It's honestly despicable and a disgrace that Wargaming doesn't promote assistance damage more in this game. Being a light gives huge importance to what you do in the game. Because when I drive a light tank, I am trying to not only make plays that obviously benefit me, but also benefit the team. I'm running vents because it gives me more view range, which gives my team more damage. I've already assisted 2,000 damage in this game. That's a lot. That's literally equivalent to a full health medium into your tent. So technically, I've literally killed a full health medium just by keeping people spotted. And that's huge. And it gives your team lots of plays. Not only that, but just getting that girl spotted obviously gave me the ability to also have him no longer be able to sit in the back. Getting that 57 heavy spotted who looked like he loaded either late into the game or was AFK at the beginning of the battle basically killed him from full health. Like, it's so important to be able to spot your opponents. And having vents, which gives you an extra 10 meters of view range, that's a big amount of distance, to be entirely honest. So we're aiming it on the 60 TP. We get one, we got two, and that one really, bruh, that was kind of cringe. That should not have done that. We would have done a little bit more damage that game if our shell had hit, but it's not that big of a deal. You'll also notice I don't run a spell liner on my light. And again, the reason why is because I'm willing to take that risk that I'll be high explosive penned for the advantage of more view range by running double food. So this game, we are at 5,439 damage, which is quite a solid amount for everything that went on in this game. We got a victory and a pretty solid victory at that. So we actually did 5,700. I don't know. Oh yeah, that's right. We blind shot the enemy Sheridan. So 5,700 damage. We assisted 1,900. So that is 7,000 combined. We killed four people we spotted almost their entire team up and we actually managed to ace the tank the boss shot to is the highest ace bar you'll find in tier 10 with 1600 xp and it shows you that this tank is just a beast it really is like if you know what you're doing in this tank you can get some truly incredible results the fact that it has 3200 dpm with the level of accuracy it does with the level of mobility it has it's just incredible personally i think the the uh, quad shot is better than the triple shot. And you can see why it just felt so much more accurate, so much more enjoyable in the battles that I played. As I said, I averaged around 40, 100, 40, 200 playing in the four shot for 10 games. And I averaged around 3,700 with the three shot. But to be fair, as I said, the three shot, I had some really unfortunate teams, which limited my capabilities of getting out damage, which kind of sucks, but still a really solid overall result. 
And I think both guns are great. I think you will have a blast messing around with the bat chat. And what's cool is that you have two different gun options, which means that you can have two different experiences, both really good, kind of like an M6 show. So let me know in the comments what you guys think about the Bioshock Tion. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye!